All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I mean, if you look at a radio wave, now you can't see the radio wave, but it's permeating through everything material. And on that radio wave is a signal, is information. And the radio dial or the antenna you acts as a transducer or a TV antenna acts as a transducer and takes that frequency and turns it into a picture. So then when you're tapping into information from the field, mm -hmm. certain latent aspects of your brain act as a transducer and you will take that information and your brain will turn it into imagery and that's called a download or an upgrade. People are starting to connect to that field of information and they're having very significant inner experiences that we've actually been able to predict now. In fact, we now know when it's going to happen. So you're always sending and receiving light and information all the time. You can create a field that is very dissonant, very incoherent, uh, static, that's not a clear signal. So the effects that you produce in sending that information have less effects on the nature of reality than when your brain and heart are coherent. So when your brain is coherent, all the compartments that usually are subdivided are resonating in some type of harmony, in some type of order. When your heart is coherent, the rhythm of the heart is producing that measurable field. So in order for you to affect matter, mm -hmm. you have to combine a clear intention, a coherent brain, with an elevated emotion, heart-centered feeling. This is the center of oneness. This is the center of wholeness. This is where our divinity starts. This is the union of polarity, the union of opposites. This is where it all comes together. And when In you the heart. get it, and when you get that energy right here, it happens and we've measured this. Once it's here, it's going to go all the way to the brain. It's going to act as an amplifier to amplify the brain. And when the brain starts to get super coherent, then it has very direct influences, uh, effects on the heart. So so what's the relevance behind that? Well, once again, the signal that you're creating on a daily basis is going to either work in a constructive way or in a destructive way. And as an example, if you're walking around feeling sorry for yourself and suffering and feeling victimized, then you're actually emanating that signal into the field. And what you're saying is bring me an experience equal to my suffering, but bring it in a way that I least expect, that surprises me and leaves no doubt that I've created this outcome. So mm -hmm. in a sense, we're not punished for our sins, we're punished by our sins, and sin is an attitude. So then the opposite is also true. When you teach people how to connect to the energy of a future dream and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past, to believe in their future more than they believe in their past, to fall in love with their future more than they fall in love with their past and be able to combine that clear intention of that future and begin to feel the emotions of that future before it's made manifest. They're broadcasting a whole new signature into the field. Now the beauty behind that is, is that the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing that future to you. Which also means then the moment you get in your car and start getting angry, and getting frustrated because you're in traffic. Now you just disconnected from the energy of your future and now you're back to the energy of your past. And those survival emotions exert less effects on the nature of reality. So now you feel like matter trying to change matter. You're, you're separate and so you force it, you control it, you try harder, you wish, you pray, you hope. I mean, hope is a beggar. We do everything, compete to try to manipulate and make it happen because we have limited resources then. So then, when a person's able to sustain or maintain that modified state of mind and being, then the fun starts to happen because you start seeing those synchronicities. You start seeing those coincidences, those opportunities, those unknowns, those things start falling out of nowhere because you are connected to that field of information. And not only are you connected to it, but you're also beginning to influence it. So then more and more people are creating now and less and less people are experiencing the state of being called being a victim. So then if you're a victim, then you would say, I was angry because of traffic. Well, then I would say to you, well, you mean your outer world was controlling how you think and feel. Some circumstance, some person, something in your outer world is actually controlling your feelings and thoughts. That means you're a victim to those circumstances. But when you change the way you think and feel, 
and it starts to produce effects in your outer world, now you start to realize you're the creator of your life. And the moment you start seeing feedback in your life, you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And now you're going to believe now you're more of the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. Well, this is, uh, this is the beauty behind, as you said earlier, living in this day and age. I mean, more and more people are waking up. I mean, more and more people are really beginning to realize that, that nobody is so special to be excluded from this phenomenon. And, and, and we all have the same biology. We come, we come with all the neurological and biological machinery to do this. And we all, we all have done it. We've all said, what would it be like to be, to have my own show? What would it be like to, uh, be wealthy, to be healthy, to be free, to be in a new relationship, to have a family, uh, to have a mystical experience. And the moment we ask that question, we turn on the creative center in our brain, the frontal lobe. That's the boss. That's the CEO. That's the symphony leader. And it has connections to the entire brain. And one thing it wants to do is answer the question. So what does it do? It looks out into the landscape of the brain and see what's stored in there. Things we've learned intellectually and things we've experienced that's related to the question. And it begins to activate those circuits. The frontal lobe calls them up. And then they, those circuits start to fire in tandem. And when they start to resonate and fire in tandem, we get a picture in our mind. That's called intention. We get a, we're selecting a new potential in the quantum field. Now, the, the passionate person who's fully engaged in looking at that future, observing that future, the thought in their mind literally becomes the experience. Now, the end product of an experience is called an emotion. And all of a sudden, the person starts to feel the emotion of the event before it's made manifest. And now, how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So in a sense, they're changing their state of being. Now, the stronger the emotion that they feel, the more altered they are inside of them, the more they'll pay attention to the picture in their mind. And now they're creating a long-term memory. In other words, they're remembering their future. Now, you can't just do that once and then get up and expect your bank account to be filled. That's not how it works. Or, or you'd be selected to go to the moon. That's not how it works. You have to be able to maintain that modified state of mind and body, mm -hmm. independent of any condition in your external environment independent of the emotions or habits or hardwired attitudes that are subconscious programs that are stored in the body and independent of time. And if you can, you will start to see those unusual events beginning to occur in your life. So then you become the scientist in your life. And so it takes training to teach people how to get beyond their past. Mm -hmm. And we know this because we've done enough workshops to know that the hardest part of a workshop that we do is the first day or two because people are coming, they're emotional, they're, they're got problems, they, they, they're, they're got a lot of questions, uh, they're, ana they're overly analytical, uh, they're stuck, and we just, we, we just keep coaxing them past their identity and sooner or later they start letting go and when they do, now they're ready to create.